Okay, well we're pretty familiar with Euclidean geometry and the types of objects that are there, points, lines, planes, rays, and you should know how that you can use Geometry Sketchpad and the built-in tools to illustrate that, and one of the tasks for this week is to actually just do that. It should be a very simple thing for you. But let's talk about how this distance metric plays out in Euclidean geometry. Now we'll prove later but the Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem is basically what's going to lead to the uh, distance metric in Euclidean geometry. So in fact this is the this turns out to be the metric that we have to have for Euclidean geometry. But let's go ahead and go over it right now. So one of the ways we can uh, identify points in a plane is remember we can put a coordinate system on a line we put a coordinate system on another line and notice that it's a consistent coordinate system and we've done it in such a way that we line up the origins on the two systems and we make these two coordinate systems perpendicular to other, each other so this gives us a three-dimensional coordinate system known as a Cartesian coordinate system named after a uh, mathematician and philosopher uh, Rene Descartes uh, who was one of the first to, uh, not the first to use the system by any means or develop it, but one of the first to really make a lot of good use of it to connect geometry with algebra. So um, here we have two points A and B, and we have the line segment between them. This is Euclidean line segment. How can we measure the distance? Well, one way we can do is <clears throat> measure a horizontal distance there, essentially using the horizontal number line and we can use the vertical number line to measure the vertical distance so if we look at the coordinates uh, let me try to get them at least close to something nice here actually I can I can make them uh, very nice right at the moment if I'll go to uh, graph and snap points and now when I move them around here they snap to some nice integer values uh, but of course they don't have to be integer values, we can turn that off if we want. And so here we have the point 2, 1, and here we have the point uh, 5, 3 for B. And their coordinates are listed over here. And so we can call this horizontal distance the change in the X. Well, the change in the X is the horizontal change. If it's going to the right, it's positive, to the left, it's negative. So it's, it's kind of a vector quantity, actually. So delta X is x sub 2 minus x1. Of course, the delta, that's an uppercase Greek letter like a D. D would be a Roman letter. The delta is a Greek letter standing for difference in or change in. And so that's three units to the right. Similarly, we go two units up. And so the lengths of these sides are three and two. The Pythagorean theorem now would tell us, since this is a right triangle, that if we square these two sides' lengths, we get the length of of this side square. So the length AB then is the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared, or in this case the square root of 13 or about 3.61 units. Now this is uh, exactly um, what we have to have for the metric and so this is how a metric is set up in Euclidean geometry and we're going to compare and contrast this with uh, a metric in, in uh, taxicab geometry. So let's go ahead and do that now. So in taxicab geometry, we have, uh, let's go ahead and, and snap points here too. Okay, and Euclidean geometry, the way we measure distance, makes sense if you can go straight from one point to the other and actually follow this Euclidean path. This would make sense if you're at a big wide open field or if you could fly. But let's suppose you're in an environment like a city, like Manhattan, that has streets uh, going east-west and avenues going north-south. And let's say you're at this intersection right here of First Street and uh, let's see, First Avenue and Second Street, and you want to go to uh, Fifth Street and uh, let's see, let's see, we'll go to we'll go to Sixth Street and Fifth Avenue. Yeah, 6th Street, 5th Avenue, 6th Street, right there. And say so you want to go there. Well, how are you going to get there? Well, there's, there's several paths that you could take, but one you cannot take is the path that goes right along that black line. It doesn't make any sense because you'd have to be able to, to walk right through buildings there. Now, if you could have a helicopter, you could get from there to there, you know, or if you're Superman, I guess. 
make that leap in a single bound, I guess, or fly there. But how are we going to do? Well, you'd actually have to go down this street and then turn up this avenue, and you would go four blocks this way, four blocks that way, you'd end up going eight blocks, more than what you would be traveling if you just traveled in a straight line distance. So this is kind of the motivation for the taxi cab metric in geometry. Now, we're going to, so, so what is that? Well, you find the coordinates for these two points. Uh, right at the moment, they're 1, 2, and 5, 6. You still find delta x and delta y, which are, in this case, both 4. Let's make them a little different than each other. Now, delta x is 5, and, and delta y is 3. So, say we're going 5 to the east, 5 blocks east, and 3 blocks north. And so, we're having a total of 5 plus 3 is 8. So, you take the absolute value of those. And so, in case you go down or to the left, you want to do absolute value to make sure you get that to work out. Now, um, this is going to be our metric. Now, we want, to, we want to generalize this now a little bit and say free ourselves from the restriction of the uh, buildings and stuff. So now just remove all the buildings, make it more an idealized situation. So now we can move our points around, not necessarily to intersections of streets. And we can talk about the line segment actually being this line segment. So in taxicab geometry, it turns out that that uh, lines are actually line segments are actually Euclidean line segments. Lines are Euclidean lines. Uh, rays are Euclidean rays, and um, and we have um, let's see here we have we have uh, circles. Well, not sure about circles. We're going to come back to that later because that depends on distance. But uh, angles are Euclidean angles. And angles are measured exactly the same way they are in, in Euclidean geometry. We'll get to angles in our next, uh, next week, our next unit. But, um, but distance C is measured in a different way. So now we're going to say any two points that we have, the line segment is still this black thing, but the distance or length of that line segment now, so it's still this set of points, but the way we measure distance there is by this other metric. Okay? And so that's the taxi cab metric. So if you think about it, it's very, very much like Euclidean geometry in terms of many of the, uh, the things that we have. But this metric definitely makes some things uh, different. Anything that's going to depend on measuring a distance is going to be different in this taxi cab geometry. So this is going to give us a nice compare and contrast with Euclidean geometry because we'll be able to kind of see which Euclidean concepts really depend on how we measure distance. Because in taxi cab, some of those may very well be different. The concept of between still works the same way. Um, so points in between are the same. Uh, Euclidean, the taxi cab and Euclidean midpoints are still going to be the same. Uh, but uh, some other concepts are not necessarily the same. So we'll leave that to uh, more discussion and more uh, investigation through the next through some of the homework tasks and some of the other things that we'll be getting into a little bit later on in the course.